Yeah, I'm working on a new painting today. Projecting the sketch off, and you'll see it's something kind of different. I've done Mothman before, but uh, there's not going to be any other figures in this one besides Mothman. And uh, I'm going to try some of uh, some of my special uh, acrylic painting techniques and uh, let you follow along as I do them. This is a Mark Farner album we're listening to in the background. And uh, for those who are interested, these paintings, the particular method I use, I keep the uh, painting flat, uh, horizontal. I don't tilt it up. So, so we got so far. Okay, now we got the drawing fully transferred onto the board. A little bit of extra background stuff. And uh, that's the rough it was taken from. So I have a plan for this, color scheme, values, and so forth. The uh, Mothman, as you know, his eyes are very red, sort of glowing. Uh, there'll be a lot of darkness everywhere else. Uh, some rim lighting, for example. Another light source from over here. And in the background, typically, it's going to be some flame. No, that's part of the wing. It's going to be some flames and a glow back there, like from some sort of disaster. Got a fallen telephone pole and a wire signature. And we're ready to go. Okay, this is another stage. It's all pure black. Kind of following the um, Da Vinci and Leonardo da Vinci's uh, <clears throat> painting approach, which I discuss in another video, where it basically says that uh, all nature is completely, totally black uh, and dark. Only light um, illuminates it, so you should start with black. And... Um, work from there, dark to light. So anyway, this is a kind of watercolor -y approach with the acrylics. I've grayed some of it, but a lot of it's pure black. And uh, it's also occurred to me that um, I could make this a, a black light painting and uh, perhaps to good effect, the eyes being black light reactive. Uh, you know, another thing uh, I've started doing is painting with adequate light sources. And uh, you know, this is a box light softbox light, I guess it's called. And um, sometimes when you're working in dim light, uh, things get by and then you take, you, you work and work and work. And then when you take it outside into bright light, you're surprised there's all this stuff that you didn't see. So uh, it really pays to have adequate lighting. Well, this is cheating, kind of helping things along. Now, I'm figuring out, uh, kind of, I'm, this is ad-libbing big time. So I'm figuring out what I'm going to do with this thing, kind of as I go. I had some ideas when I started. Uh, I'm abandoning some of them, starting uh, grasping new ones. Uh, here's some of the crap I'll be using. Spray bottle, uh, starting with two colors. Um, blue, a dark blue, and a purple. Purple kind of to jazz it up a little bit. This purple might actually be black light reactive, I'm not sure. So uh, let's throw some on. So here we go. Underpainting, spray bottle, generous uh, water. Take a blue, squirt it on, and uh, put a couple other spots sparsely. There you go. Hoffman, what are you doing? Are you crazy? Here's the purple. We mix that around in between. It's pouring pretty badly for a new bottle. You know, we got a nice fat brush here. And watch what I do. Now you might think it's like, oh my God, he's painting over everything. What the hell? What's going to happen next? But um, you'll find that painting over the black, uh, a good bit of it stays. And um, a little too much there. And if you want to come in and reinforce it later, you can do that. Okay, that's pretty wild. Now that's, that's a kind of a really crazy um, abstract uh, not abstract, quasi-abstract background like you might see in 1960s 
advertising or paperback art, that kind of thing. And I see a clump of crap here. I use my razor blade to pick that off. And uh, to tell you the truth, it's so crazy looking now uh, with all the sp spackling and stuff. It's kind of abstract and psychedelic. Wasn't planning on doing it this way, but you know, I think I like it. So at this point, we can let it dry for, you can either let it dry completely or you can let it dry for uh, less where it's not completely dry. And then you can come in and tweak a couple little things uh, if you can. But there again, um, this is acrylic, so it's pretty unforgiving. And uh, that's why I use so many accidental effects. Um, you know, I think that's gonna be black light. I think I bet you that purple, I'll check that out. So we let that dry for a certain period. So here we are completely dry and a lot of things kind of happened. Uh, kind of nice surprises. Uh, did check this purple, it's not black light reactive, unfortunately, but work with that. Uh, I'm beginning to change the whole idea of how I planned to do this. Initially, he was gonna be cool and there was gonna be uh, fire back here, like a city on fire or something like that. And uh, that would be warm, of course, warm comes forward and cooler seeds, so I'm gonna can that and I'll make it cooler back here. Uh, his eyes need to be red. Those will definitely be uh, black light uh, day glow paints, uh, but I'll paint the, the eyeballs white before I put that stuff on most likely. So uh, you can see the blacks worked out well because if you had never seen me do the blacks, you might assume that these were just uh, brush strokes done like that, not that it was washed over with layers of acrylic. And uh, as I've mentioned before on YouTube, uh, the layers of acrylic, we'll call that, um, yeah, veiling is what it's called. So it's when you use, you basically are glazing with something that has an opaque quality to it. So you get some of what's underneath through it, but to only a certain amount. So you can use it to your advantage. I don't see that many people doing this. Uh, I find it a hell of a lot of fun because as you can tell already, I don't know where it's going. It's like a piece of jazz music. I'm improvising. I'm letting it be what it wants to be. Uh, it occurred to me, it's like, well, if the background's so weird, how can I explain that? Maybe it's his home world or his home dimension. That's why everything's weird. These splotches, if they were had glowed, and I can still make them glow, but I thought perhaps they're living things, insects, fireflies, something like that, have several of them hovering around, and I may still, uh, still work with that. So anyway, if it's his home dimension, it can be weird as hell, right? Spinning it like that is how I isolate a little puddle and stop it from bleeding out with the hot air blowing on it. Uh, you can see I've added some uh, a mixed uh, blue and black mixture. So you remember how dark that was? Well, that's actually what real black looks like. That's what it looked like before it got veiled. So uh, a lot of what's going on is relative in terms of the values. Um, you put one value down, it looks different when you put a next one, uh, another one next to it. So, um, added some white, some punch, to, uh, made, made a lot punchier of this effect of light coming down. I uh, took a chance and made this into a little flock of fireflies or something, which is what's casting the light on him. And then it occurred to me, it's like, you know, I could use some spray paint on this uh, to make some nice glowing effects. So I may yet do that in a couple of spots. Um, but yeah, I've gone in with that dark mixture and stuck it in little spots here and here around the eyes choo, 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 uh, for contrast. Now I'm gonna try putting in some pure color. I've got a nice dark purple. And you know, on these painting things, I'm not gonna bore you with me uh, sitting there, new, you know, doing this all day long like some of these guys do, because to me, that's boring. Um, you're smart enough to figure that out, figure out, you know, that my hand was moving, basically. And uh, so this purple was, looks a little transparent or something. Um, it, it's a rule in painting uh, to use pure color whenever possible. 
uh, or, or basically, could pure or color be used? It's like a troubleshooting question you can ask yourself. And um, in this case, you know, sometimes you put it down and with these acrylics, you're not quite sure what it looks like until it dries. It's going to look a lot darker while it's wet. Um, it's another little trick there. That's a Frazetta trick, a classical art trick. So like take your color and move it around, put it in different places unifies the painting and unfortunately a lot of people today what they do is they got a palette um, the simple palette and it's like oh the figure is all blue and the background is all orange and the machine is all green there's no green in the orange no orange in the you know and basically you've got to have a little bit of one color in every other color so that's one thing about Frazetta paintings or good classical paintings because it is a classical technique, is that um, there are lots and lots of little color, pure color bits tucked into the shadow, um, transitions. So that's why it would take a long time for Frazetta to do a painting. He'd say, oh, well, you know, I, I love putting the stuff in when it's kind of, um, fresh but um, the finishing is murder it takes forever and it's like yeah let's see I've mixed some of the weird color with this other color with the purple and that's kind of making it kind of lively so uh, anyway there again this is my hand moving I said I wouldn't do that but it's hard to get up and stop the camera really well, that's my finger moving actually <laughs> It's uh, cheating and smudging technique, so I'll cut it. Um, it doesn't look like blue compared to the other stuff. It's a light color, but it's not as light as the white. And uh, also, what I'm doing now, because the canvas is flat and because there's a lot of water on it, what happens, it's what I call puddling. And when it puddles, it has a tendency to flatten out water spreads out and it basically helps you to get around the flatness of the acrylic effect and you can see that's kind of happening here okay we need something some kind of dramatic line here there we go that's good that's kind of stops that eye from going down here where it's not supposed to be Doink, doink. So in here again, I'm going into wet. It's similar to like handling it with watercolor in a way. And like I said, the, the puddling, poodling, puddling effect tends to soften everything. As you, as you can see, these are not expensive art store acrylics. They are craft store acrylics. She said, Billy, I don't love you anymore. And then she turned and walked straight out the door. The last words to me was, I got to go in peace. And I never saw my that up well here we are and um, I didn't uh, video a whole bunch of the process because the battery on the camera ran out but basically there's been a lot of little noodling and tweaking and uh, not to over quote Frazetta but he was talking about that endless process of tweaking and adjusting and that's basically what gives you a 3d uh, quality to the painting where basically you just don't let go of the damn thing until every edge is modified, every little thing that you see uh, that can be tweaked or charged in, in some visual way uh, is done. So 
There's a lot of stuff I've done here, a lot of little tweaking, a lot of little edge control issues, fixing little things, jumping around. Uh, but some of the more interesting stuff, I dropped in a darkest area right here on him behind the hand. The other stuff doesn't seem to matter. Haven't put in the black light stuff yet. But I wound up getting a lot of little reflected lights from here and there. So it was kind of fun because it's weird lighting. So it's like the light from the eyes, uh, which is going to be the black light colors. Like there's a little bit of that there, you know, as it would be. There's a little bit around the rims. Um, there's this light there again. There's a light coming from here. And um, light from here, I've got a slight reflection on the kneecap. That's coming from there. Um, I also added in the uh, Fateful Bridge, uh, for those of you who know the story about uh, Point Pleasant, West Virginia and the Mothman, I have put in the bridge, which collapsed at Christmas, and um, it's a tragic thing to happen. So... Um, this is what you wind up with with this technique. There's a lot of accidents that happen and they're kind of controlled accidents. That's what keeps it interesting for me where it's more about the process and not so much about the finished product. Whereas uh, with a lot of people it's like, the, oh, all they see is a finished product. They have no idea what went into it or the pleasure or pain that was the process itself. So, uh, well, here are the colors that I picked out for the eyes, well, or to use in the painting period. And this red seems to have the biggest jolt to it. So, put some of that out. We're going to drop it over those white eyeballs and see what happens. Unfortunately, we can't adapt this color at all. We can't lighten it because when you add anything to it, it's no longer uh, completely fluorescent. And I've also found that when you mix two fluorescent colors together, um, you get mud. You cannot mix, say, yellow and blue and get green. My God, this stuff is freaking intense. Holy moly. Well, that's what you get, right? Maybe I can put a little bit right there. Drop it in a couple of other little places. Drop it down here. Um, that kneecap I was talking about. Um, and I can put it on these little firefly things. Oh boy. See here again, it's ad-libbing. It's um, like jazz or something like that. You know, I could put these in some places where you might not even really see them until that black light comes on. It's back there. And uh, this is a very organic process, very fun. Um, and you've been here from the start. You saw the uh, humble origins. You beheld the logic going into its creation. Uh, you saw, with your own eyes, the sketch that was used. And there are things I could say about the sketch, too. There's a, uh, but a lot of these techniques are in my second, uh, more secrets of drawing book. So. Anywhere else I can put that stuff? Let's see. Let's thin it down. So, yeah, I filled up the camera. Got to do the breast there. And now... We're going to do the black fire effect. Turn this off. Like this. And on the black light. Uh, it's a bit more orange. Uh, I'm shopping in for a different red color. But still, it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive. That's going to look good in the room. And uh, I may sell a print where I, I do this and put it on by hand. Or perhaps a flicker print where the eyes are illuminated from by a LED flicker bulb from behind, like I do with the Tiki prints and all those. So anyway, thanks for being here. Hope you enjoyed it. 
I hope you will check out my new channel when it uh, is launched, my new instructional channel. Sayonara.